with news in the pharmaceutical industry. It is the largest health care fraud settlement in history. We're going right now to Devlin Barrett. He is in Washington, D.C. to bring us up to speed on this. GlaxoSmithKline paying $3 billion settling marketing issues over three drugs. Tell us what they were. Hi, Wendy. Yeah, uh, Wellbutrin, Paxil, and uh, there's actually a number of drugs uh, that, were, that they found misconduct in. Um, and another one that they, they singled out for, uh, pr that they were particularly upset about was the marketing of Paxil for, uh, an, as an antidepressant for children, where studies have shown that it, it, it is apparently not effective for children. And um, the, you, they, were, you were at the Justice Department this morning at the press conference? Yes. And tell us, so they were, what, was, what were the allegations against GlaxoSmithKline for these particular drugs? It, the issue is what's called off-label use of prescription drugs, and essentially that means marketing and encouraging doctors to prescribe drugs for thing for uses which they're not approved. Uh, so, in the case of Paxil, for example, that's an antidepressant. Uh, it's never been approved in on use for children, uh, yet uh, the company marketed it and promoted it as such uh, to children, and doctors prescribed it to children. And oftentimes, these cases hinge around uh, the sort of the perks that drug companies give doctors to encourage them to prescribe the drugs. Right. And in this case, what they talked about was Hawaiian vacations and, you know, a pheasant hunting trip in Europe and tickets to see Madonna. Right. Things allegedly had nothing really to do with, with, with the drug itself and the selling of the drug. Um, let's, let's talk about this, the so $3 billion largest settlement, I believe, in U.S. history. Now, what does this do for GlaxoSmithKline? Does this help them put this behind them, or are there going to be, you know, future ramifications for them and for the, the overall pharmaceutical industry? Right. What the company says is that they have cleaned up these practices well before this settlement, and the settlement is sort of the last part of the cleanup. Um, what I, I think what, what some industry uh, folks are skeptical about is that this isn't anything more than just the cost of doing business for a lot of these drug companies. For example, $3 billion is a lot of money. It's the largest health care fraud settlement the U.S. has ever done. But at the same time, the company made, I believe, $8 billion in profit last year. Right. So, you know, it's something they can absorb. The government's position is, when asked about this, they say they can't say how much profit they made from the off-label sales, but they say making them pay it all at once is an extra cost to the company, an extra punishment to the company. And a number of companies, Pfizer, Eli Lilly, in recent years, having to pay some of these, these, these whopping settlements. Uh, they, they had, GlaxoSmithKline had agreed, at least I guess in principle, in November to this $3 billion settlement. What was new today, specifically? Well, this is sort of the finalized version of that, and I, and I think the parts that are new is that there is, a, there is also what's called an integrity agreement that comes along with this, where the company is going to change the, its compensation structure for its drug reps, uh, because the government believes that that compensation structure encouraged some of the conduct that uh, caused problems here. And, and that, that also requires essentially closer monitoring of their own internal systems to make sure they don't just start doing the same thing over again.